All right, muchachos. So finally, we can start programming more interesting applications. Things that react to keyboard presses or when you move your mouse and click around, animations, games, all that fun stuff. And the mechanism by which we're going to do this is with Big Bang, right? But before you do so, you have to require it over here. So require to HTTP slash universe and also the image library because we're going to be dealing with images, all right? All right, so what the heck is Big Bang, right? It's not the Korean boy band, all right? So listen closely. Big Bang is a function that takes as its first argument the initial world state, all right? And this can be any data type you want. Right now it's a Boolean because we're keeping it very simple so you can learn. But you're going to see examples with strings, numbers, and etc. all right? And right after that, it takes in a number of clauses, all right? So on tick, update, all right? So this is a keyword, on tick. It has to be typed out this way. And then update is just a function that we created over here on line five. It can be any name we want. Same with render, right? So it can be something like, um, I don't know, uh, cow or something, right? It just doesn't matter. It just has to be consistent like so, right? But might as well, you know, name functions to be descriptive of what they do, right? In this case, update seems nice and render to draw stuff, right? So on tick update. So update is a function that takes in a Boolean and spits out a Boolean, right? So it's going to take in the initial world state and then run it through the update function. So guess what this does? Update uh, false, all right? Try to read what it does from the function body right here. Guess in three, two, and one, it just flips it to become true. And likewise, if we just give it true, right? It's just going to produce false. So it just flips the Boolean over, right? And the result of that is then going to be passed into the render function right over here, right? On the to draw and then render. It's going to take that Boolean and then convert it to an image uh, by the render function that we wrote over here on line nine. All right, as you can see, the signature also matches here. So take that Boolean, convert it to an image. So guess what this does? Right? What happens if we render false? All right, try to guess in three, two, and one. It just renders the blue triangle because if false, right, then it's going to go take this branch, and therefore it's going to be this triangle right here, right? And also likewise, render true, render a square, a red square, right? All right, so I'm going to run this program just so you can see what it looks like. Note that it doesn't go very fast. So it's going to flash a lot. So ep epilepsy warning. All right, three, two, one. I'm going to run it. Don't say I didn't warn you. So it's going to pop up this window, and you can see that it's flashing the uh, red square and then the blue triangle very, very fast, right? How fast is it going? By default, it's going over, by default, it's one over 28, all right? So approximately 30 milliseconds, right? So we can specify a number right after the update function that we gave it on the onset clause. We can specify how fast we want it to go in seconds, all right? So I want one second per tick. So it's gonna take one time per second. And if we run this, it's gonna go much slower and we can see what it does, all right? So I'll pop this window and it says square, triangle, right? One second per tick, all right? And it's gonna draw that, all right? Again, by default, it's if we don't pass anything, it's gonna be one over 28, all right? And that's pretty fast. But games nowadays run at one over 60, which is, you know, even faster. It's 1% of a second, all right? 16 milliseconds per frame. And nowadays gaming monitors and stuff have one over 20, that's even less than 1% of a frame, right? All right, just some fun facts. Okay, so now you know what it does. Maybe it's easier to visualize it by drawing the table of it so you can see all, all of what it does in sort of a sequential fashion all laid out at once. So a good way to do this is to draw a table right over here. Highly recommend it. In fact, I'm gonna do this a lot for these upcoming exercises. So over here on the right-hand side, we have I'm gonna draw this out actually. We have ticks, all right? And then we have the world state. I'm gonna call it WS for short. And then we're gonna have the image that it produces at the end, all right? So what happens at tick zero? Well, at tick zero, we saw that we had to provide it the initial world state. So it's gonna be false initially, all right? And what image is associated with false? We're gonna see shortly because I forgot. False is associated with this triangle, all right? So it's gonna, blue, it's gonna draw a blue triangle, all right? All right, then next tick, what's gonna happen? 
Well, it's going to take that world state and then flip it around. All right, so it's going to be true now. And then what is true math with? Well, it's going to be a red square, right? The next tick, it's going to be two. What time does that tick two? Well, it's going to take the previous world state, flip it over because that's what the update function does, right? The update function that's mapped to on tick right over here. It's just going to flip that Boolean as we specified. So just flip this Boolean that was previously over here. You are going to be false. There we go. And the image associated with false. We just arbitrarily decided that, hey, you're going to be a triangle. All right, and it's going to do this on and on and on uh, by default. Again, 1 over 28 times a second, right? Okay. So there you go. That's what Big Bang does. All right. Alrighty, so I said that earlier in the video that this world state can be any data type you want. It can be a number, it can be a string, as you'll see shortly, right? So let's modify this program so that it rotates a thinking emoji 360 degrees in a circle on and on and on forever, right? Alright, so let's break it down. What needs to change? Well, the world state. We can't use a boolean anymore because booleans can only represent two things, true or false. So Numbers seem nice, so we're going to say the world state is now a number. Now we have to go around and change all these booleans to numbers, right? Change all the signatures that previously took the world state that was boolean to a number. So control F, type in boolean, and then now you guys are all numbers, right? So number, your number, your number, your number. But we can do better than that. Why don't we say it's world state and start replacing now, all right? And then write out what a world state is. So we're going to write out the type comment. World state is a number interpretation, the degrees of rotation. All right. All right. So now if we want to change this to a string in the future, because we're going to be doing some exercises with the world state being strings, now we just change it on line four, one line over here, and that's it, right? We don't have to go around saying, hey, now the world state is going to be a string. So you're a string, you're a string, you're a string. You're a string and etc. All right, everyone will just have to go look up what a world state is in the type comment right over here. All right, so much easier to change. Let's just change this back to a number. All right, all right. So now let's update the update function. All right, we got to change this. So previously it just nodded whatever the input was, which was boolean. We can't do that with a number because numbers, of course, don't go into the not function. Only booleans do. So what do we want to do? Well, let's just add one. To the world state, all right? Because we got to keep rotating, so just keep adding one to zero. And this will be one and two and etc. All right? So let's keep going. But important note here the number one mistakes students make is that the types are not correct, right? So let's say, you know, you're writing code and it's really long and you're tired and you, for some reason, this produces false, right? False is not the world state, right? It is going to consume the number. But it's not going to do anything with that number. And it's going to, hey, we're going to produce false. False is not a world state. A world state is a number. Number, false, right? That's the mismatch right over here. So make sure your type signatures match, all right? That's the number one mistake students make. So be very conscious of signature types and making sure they match, all right? So now let's move on to the render function. What are we going to modify here, all right? So I said that we want to make it a rotating thinking emoji. So let's just do that. So I'm going to make it a text, and then I'm going to give it the string of this emoji right over here. Size is the next argument. Always right click and search in help desk if you're not sure what these arguments mean. All right, I happen to remember them. So 255 is the size, that's the max size. And next is the color, right? It's not going to do anything with it. On Windows, it does because of how their emoji system works. I know emojis look different on platforms, so your emojis may not look different than mine because of font reasons. But anywho, nonetheless, all right? So let's just run this and see what happens. So there is our thinking emoji on a pop-up window, all right, in all its glory. All right, so how come it's not rotating? Well, we're not doing anything with the increasing number right over here, right? We're just like always spitting out this one static emoji. So let's rotate it. So let's wrap this around a rotate. And we're going to rotate it by ws degrees, right? It's going to be an incrementing number. So it's going to be 1. It's going to be 0, then 1, and then it's going to keep going towards infinity. All right, so let's just run this. And then we should see our rotating emoji. Uh, let me see. Rotate expects an angle in degrees. Add this to our start given image. 
So the first argument is an image. Oh, all right, it's saying, hey, I need a number first. Oopsie daisy, you gotta swap these two arguments. Always right click and help desk, if you're not sure what it means. Okay, so there we go. There is our thinking emoji rotating ever so slowly. All right, in fact, let's just change this back to the default. There we go, now it should go 28 times a second and we can see a more smooth animation. And there is our rotating animation. Ta-da! Nice. All right. Okay. So now let's do an exercise, all right? We're going to modify this program so that it rotates the less than sign 90 degrees per second, all right? I'm going to do a table here before we do so. And then I'm going to challenge you guys to do the modification, all right? Let's draw my table here. All right, so this is tick number. So I'm just going to write t hash for short. All right. And then next is the world state. And then the image associated with, all right? All right. All right, so what happens at tick zero? Well, it's going to start at zero degrees. And the image is going to be this less than symbol, like so. All right, what happens at the next tick? Well, I said 90 degrees per second, all right? So I'm going to assume that this tick one second has elapsed, all right? And we're going to increase by 90. What image should we see? Well, we should see it rotated like so. All right. Let's keep going. What happens at tick two? We just increase my grid lines here. So two. Well, 90 times two is going to be 180. So 180 should look like this for the resulting image. You zoom out a little here. All right. What happens at tick three? Well, at tick three, we're going to add 90 again to the previous world state. So that's going to be 270. And then it should look like this. All right. And then 360 will go back to here. All right. And on and on and on. All right. So pause the video. Try to modify this program such that it rotates it. All right. All right. Three, two, and one. Spoilers. I'm going to assume that you guys took a good swing at it. All right. So first, let's just modify this, you know, thinking emoji. It says, hey, you're going to be a lesson sign now. All right. Now let's just run it. So we can see it rotating very smoothly, all right? That's not what you want. It rotated every 90 degrees. So instead of adding one every tick, we're going to add 90 degrees every tick. So there we go. And we're going to run it now. And we can see that it's doing that just so, all right? Let's slow it down so we can more easily see. Right, one second per tick right over here. Now we run it, and that is pretty much it. Let's just see it in action here rotating 90 degrees per second, all right? And that is how you translate the table to code, all right? So you're probably wondering, why is this like so small? Like, see, why is it clipping right here, all right? The reason for that is when Big Bang starts, right, the initial starting window size right here, that's going to be the window size forever, all right? So what we got to do to fix this is make sure that the initial starting image, the width and height are bigger, right? And it's just going to stay like that. So again, it's like this because the initial box right here is going to stay that way. So let's just place image and make the initial canvas size bigger. So we're going to place the rotating uh, less than sign in the middle of an empty scene, an empty image. That is 400 by 400, all right? And now you should probably expect, you should see what you expect, right? It's not going to, you know, sort of clip off. Right? So again, if you have that problem, make sure your starting image size is bigger. All right? Because it's always going to start off with the um, starting one is going to stay the same, like so. All right? All right. So now let's just change this back to the thinking emoji for fun. So there we go. There we go. All right. Yeah. All right, guys, so that is about it for this one. That's how you think in terms of um, world applications. Applications In this video, I just taught you, you know, how Big Bang works, right? In the next future videos, I'm going to teach you guys how to think about how to design programs with Big Bang, right? How to think about using it and making applications around them, all right? Anywho, that's about it for this one, and I will catch you guys in the next one.